Welcome. This is another episode of Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are talking about sport martial arts versus traditional martial arts. Some of you probably think you know what we're going to talk about, where we're going to come down on these things, but maybe you could tell us then. I I bet you're wrong. (laughs) Man, that was pretty high. Bet you're wrong. If you are not watching this episode, you are missing out on some of the ridiculousness. Regardless, I want to thank you for joining us here for another episode. If you want to check out all the episodes, they're in your podcast feed. They're on YouTube. They're at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And that's the only place that we drop all of the show notes, the transcript, links, all kinds of good stuff. So uh, thanks for coming by. If you want to see all the things that we're doing in support of the traditional martial arts community to connect, educate, and entertain, that is our mission, you can go to whistlekick.com. One of the things you'll find over there is this shirt. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you can save 15% off. This is a new entry to our very simple, um, what we call our essentials collection, just real basic stuff, kind of bare bones for those of you who want things that are kind of no frills. Okay, and they're, they're there perpetually. Most of our items are rotated out. If you want to support us even more, you've got a Patreon you can use. I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. I got notes there. I'm trying not to use them. <laughs> Patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can get as little as two bucks a month at the $50 tier. You can be part of the school owner's mastermind. There are a bunch of other perks in there from free stuff, free merch, and just patreon.com slash whistlekick. Check it out. And if you're like, you know, Jeremy, I, I like the idea of a Patreon but I don't really want to spend any money, $2. You, you don't deserve $2. Go to whistlekick.com slash family because we give you free behind the scenes stuff there as well. And it's also the easiest place to find all the things you can do to support us in our mission. You want to direct link to the Patreon or the places to leave reviews, things like that. We've got it over there. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. When we step into the subject of sport martial arts, it inevitably becomes divisive Mm -hmm. because people tend to think that you have to be in a camp. You have to be one or the other. You have to be, you know, this is the best thing in the world all the time for everyone, regardless of circumstance. And that is not the way the world works. There is no cookie cutter. We keep getting pushed into these black and white discussions on every subject And here on Martial Arts Radio, we talk about a number of those martial arts related discussions. And I just be just by knowing you, we haven't even talked about this. We set no agenda. We have no outline for this (laughs) beyond the title. I am sure you also see shades of gray in the conversation. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with the the biggest the, the biggest argument or camp that I see people get into in sport martial arts as opposed to traditional martial arts boils down to the competitive nature. Sure. Um, without a doubt. And we did a great episode on why you should compete. Yep. And we're not saying go to 52 tournaments a year, but you know why, why there are a lot of benefits to going to competition. Yeah. Um, Here's a quick one. Does the idea of competing stress you out? Would the idea of defending your life with your martial arts also stress you out? Yeah. Please continue. And and the argument that people often make is that the training that you do for sport martial arts is not, quote, and I'm putting this in air quotes for those that are listening, that is not effective in real life. That's the argument that people make. Absolutely. And um, that is a valid argument. Absolutely. But I don't think that there are a lot of instances where you where you will not be able to utilize those skills in an in an actual real life scenario and situation and be able to tweak them quickly and easily enough to be able to to still be effective. I think the biggest thing to remember is that the transferability of our training to where we want to take it. And I think all of us want the ability, should the need arise, to defend ourselves using what we know. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do not generally train wearing street clothes. I don't, 
you know, I, I may be walking down the street or in a store wearing a winter coat and a hat and jeans and boots. Yep. I cannot recall ever running self-defense training in that attire. So that right there, there's at least some gap. Yeah. Okay. When I see people training combatives, right? Well, mm -hmm. you know, purely self-defense, et cetera, they're usually wearing athletic clothing. Those people are probably not wearing athletic clothing all the time on the street. So I think we can all agree that there is a gap. We can argue about how big the gap is, but there yep. is a gap between what we train and how we would apply it. Yeah. And no matter what you do, it's going to be different wearing regular clothes, unless you bought the special Chuck Norris jeans that they advertised in the 80s. I don't know if you saw those. They're back. Are they really? They, oh, they are. Interesting. Okay. They are. Um, I have a pair in the closet. Oh my goodness. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> they are not flattering at all. <laughs> um, anyway. But the, the point is, yeah. it's going to be different. It is. And I think if 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 we can come to some something approaching consensus that that is true, I think the people who are down on sport martial arts would agree with what we're saying. So why are they down on sport martial arts? Why are sport practitioners not so keen on doing traditional training? Because we get carved into these camps. Because we say, well, if you do this one thing, you are that thing. And if you do this thing, you can't do that thing. I disagree. Mm -hmm. I see it all as aspects of the same, same coin. Yeah. Give me it. It is to me, it is the exact same. And, and even the arguments are pretty much the same when people argue against forms. Okay. So forms may not be the best way to train for self-defense. Okay. Um, do forms trained properly develop strength? Well, yeah. Okay. Coordination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speed. Balance. Balance. Does it reduce the nervous system cost to chain techniques together in, in sequence? Yeah. Are any of those things that attributes that you don't want to develop for purposes of defending yourself? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I do not want to be stronger and faster. Should I have to defend myself? Yeah. That's silly. It is absolutely ridiculous. And you can make the same arguments about sport martial arts. Go take a look at the absolute best sport point fighters or forms practitioners, whether it's traditional or creative forms. And you will see that these people are tremendous athletes. They are athletes. Athletics develops the physical body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wrote a really short book. It's on Amazon called Stronger People Are Harder to Kill. That's true. And, and because... larger people are harder to kidnap. <laughs> Stronger people are harder to kill. Sorry. Stronger people are harder. It, you are getting better at just like throwing something down that just completely stops me. Great job. Sorry. No, I appreciate it. It's, <laughs> that is not a skill very many people have. You have it. You're getting better at it. I'm a little worried, but I'm sure everybody watching or listening enjoys it. Developing yourself for whatever reason mm -hmm. is valid. Okay. Now let's, let's take that out. Cause I think we kind of just, you know, we kick the crud out of that argument. And if yep. people want to go deeper on it, but go back to the forms episode that we did yeah. and substitute sport competition for mm -hmm. forms. Yeah. And it's all the same arguments. <clears throat> but there are other arguments now. One other would be uh, many people who do traditional martial arts look down upon sport martial arts because they do it for, and again, I'm putting this in mm -hmm. air quotes, sure. uh, for the wrong reason. You shouldn't be doing martial arts for the glory or for the trophy or for it to win it should be uh something you do for yourself or whatever reason this is an argument that i have also heard yeah in the past um i would suggest that when you when people make those arguments that is not why people actually do things people are not training for competition for glory mm -hmm. they're training for competition because it makes them feel better about themselves. Yeah. They're training for competition because they find it enjoyable. They're training for competition because they appreciate the community. For some people, it gives them a purpose or a reason to do a thing. 
we have spoken, and in fact, the last episode we recorded, we talked about the challenge that people have doing things that don't have a target. For a lot of people, a competition is a target. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not why you should do it. Okay, so when your rank promotions are coming up, or you have a visiting, you know, your your instructor's instructor is coming to visit, you don't dial things in. A lot of people do, maybe not everyone, but it's the same idea. This gives me something to train for or towards. Mm -hmm. And most people find that to be motivating. And there is nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. I would agree wholeheartedly. Um, it, if it's a matter of having a student who feels that I don't want to say validated because as an instructor, I would always try to make that be the case. But if, if I have a student that finds enjoyment out of this thing, going to a tournament, whether it's doing sparring or forms or whatever, but if they find enjoyment out of that competition and it is going to make them practice more because let's face it, no one wants to go out at a competition and do poorly. So how do you not do poorly? You practice more as an instructor. I want that. You know, I, I want my students to feel engaged and uh, enthusiastic about their training to the point that they practice as much as they can at home, as well as in the school. A lot of viewers and listeners may not know that Whistlekick sponsored a competition team for a few years. And what I found really fascinating about that, you know, everybody who was on the team also trained on their own, right? They, they, they were part of the school. This was a bunch of different schools. And... For some of them, they struggle to put their best forward in day-to-day -day training. Mm -hmm. They needed the pressure to respond. Mm -hmm. This was also me. I remember being a teenager and competing, and people would, you know, my instructors would periodically come to a local competition, and they would see me and say, who's this guy? Where, where are you when we're in the dojo yeah why is this a whole different person because i like to win mm -hmm. i like the correlation of i put in effort i get results oh the camera's unfocused <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Here, really there, we go. there we go i like the core the chain of effort leads to Results leads to, you know, awards, recognition, Success. et cetera. Success. And there aren't a whole lot of places you can do that. And the, specifically, I found that with forms. Mm. So I remember, so let's, let me lay out the landscape. I'm 14, 15, 16 years old. I am the biggest nerd in my school. I have very few friends. And the people that I, at the time, I would have called friends weren't really friends. Most of them... Um, kind of blindly accepted me just because I was around that they didn't want to cause waves. But when I say I was the biggest nerd in school, I truly was. I had a home life that wasn't always great, but I had training. Now, I'd go to class. I generally enjoyed class. Felt like I had a place there because I was a a higher ranked student, mm -hmm. you know, I earned my black belt at 16. So, you know, I was generally in the front row or close to the front row, depending on who was there. And that was great. But when I would go to competitions, somebody would send the results in my picture to the local paper. Mm -hmm. Yep. And mm -hmm. I started to win and I started to have something that I could hang my hat on. And to this day, I am a different person when I put on a martial arts uniform. I still have my competition gi. And if I put that on and I step out on that floor, I am a different person. I, I trust myself completely in a way that I do not in other ways. Now, I will be direct. That chain of recognition of what I was able to put in versus what came out of it very well may have saved my life. Mm. We don't talk about that aspect of, of my past. Often on the show, I've hinted at it. Um, I'm not going to say definitively I wouldn't have made it, but I'm not confident. I would not. But it played a money. Part. It played a substantial part yep. because it was the place in the world that I had something. Because guess what? 
Even as a junior, I was put on JV soccer. Why? Not because I wasn't good, but because I was the biggest nerd in the school. No one would pass me the ball. Mm. So I couldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> everywhere else, uh, everything else, everywhere else in my life, I didn't have anything I could point to because mm. I was a kid, right? Now, that is not, I, I'm not the only person who had that experience where sport martial arts gave them something to pursue. And when people say that's stupid or crap or useless, I'll tell you what, I could still pick up a pair of sci and tear someone apart <laughs> because of the training that I did. Yep. My forearms at, at the time, like when I was really like working hard, you flip some heavy sci around a few hundred times a day, your forearms are going to get big. Yep, absolutely. Okay. It may not be a one-to-one -one correlation, but very few things in martial arts are. Yeah, there's still applicability to the, those skills, you know, and I think the, the first uh, benefit that you mentioned when we started this episode was, do you get stressed out doing that sort of stuff? Yeah. Um, you know, my instructor has often said there are three times when you are, pre when you get to really pressure test your material that you're learning. One is in a real life altercation, right? You are going to be put under the under the wire and like, mm, you're going to get stressed, right? Another one is testing. You know, you're doing up there in front of who knows whoever's watching mm -hmm. your test or whatever. And the third is competition, mm -hmm. that you are under stress. And uh, there are so many benefits. Again, I encourage you to go back and listen to our episode on should you, com should you involve your students in competition and listen to all the benefits you can get out of it if you don't believe what we're saying, the little bit we're talking about right now. You mentioned three. You only get to choose one of those. As a student, mm -hmm. hopefully you're not going out choosing to get into physical confrontations with people. Yep. Uh, if you are, I, I'm, I'm going to say that that is wrong. Mm -hmm. and you should not be doing that. Um, it is unlikely you are choosing when you are put in front of a, a testing, a promotion board. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might, you might be able to say, I don't want to. But you're not you're not walking up to your instructor most likely and saying, you know what, I'm not sure how I would do in in a pressured situation. Can you bring everybody together so yeah. I can perform in can, front of you? Yeah, can I test next week? Guess what? That's basically a competition if you're electing yeah. to do that in that yeah. way. Yeah. But you can do that in competition. Is there another way to look at this? Because we're both on the same page. Yeah. We've yeah. kind of beat this thing. Is there I, anything we're leaving out? I, I don't think so. I think it's just a matter of everyone, regardless of what camp you're in, should have an open mind. What are the benefits to, to training in, in traditional? We've talked a lot about sure. what, what, why you should consider sport martial arts as being acceptable, right? Because there are people that think it's not. Let's go the other way. Let's stand in the sport side and talk about traditional. Sure. I, and that's going to be a little harder for me because I see sport as a subset of traditional martial arts. Mm. If I go out to a competition and I do kusanku, which, you know, is, is the, the kata that I prefer to perform, it is probably my favorite one. That's a traditional form. Mm -hmm. Am I doing it in a sport environment? Yes. Am I making some, in, some adjustments for competition? Yeah, very small ones. Can I still to this day do it sport version and the way I was taught? Absolutely. Yeah. I also see it kind of as a subset of, and I think in a lot of ways, the difference between the two is mindset. Mm. If you watch, you know who Riku Usami is. Mm -hmm. If you watch someone at the very top of like the JKA, who is performing in an amazing, beautiful, traditional form. It is a traditional form done for sport reasons in a sport environment. Yep. I, I cannot imagine someone watching someone with her grace, strength, power, speed. Not being impressed. And saying, why would you train in that way? Yeah. Also, guess what? I'm pretty sure if we could, you know, dig up and revive some of the the pioneers, you know, Funakoshi, et cetera, and say, mm -hmm. hey, what do you think of that? He'd be like, yep. <laughs> That's yeah. my guess. Yeah, yeah. 
so you know like anything else within the martial arts i, I don't i don't draw those thick lines you you don't either at least for for most of them mm -hmm. it's all part of the same yeah. train what you want to train how you want to train and based it. on your reason mm -hmm. and if you enjoy what you're doing and I, and I said this over the past weekend i taught a couple seminars this weekend if you have fun with your training and learn something with your training those are the only two check boxes you need because you will continue and yeah. if you continue long enough you will continue to learn mm -hmm. and that is good you will get better find Absolutely. ways to have fun and learn let the rest fall as it will have an open mind yeah. Cool. That's all I got. Yeah, but 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 you know why do you need to spin a purple sparkly bow? Then don't spin a purple sparkly bow. Yeah. Spin one that's not purple and sparkly. Go cut a branch off a tree. I don't care. The things you develop doing stuff is good. Mm -hmm. Do stuff. Take what you can from it. Yeah. And stop worrying about what other people are doing because it doesn't impact your training at all. Amen. To quote the shirt that I made a few years ago that we'll probably have to bring back at some point. Shut up and train. Yep. I'm with you. Okay. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. If you have feedback on this one, not that we tried to stir the pot, but maybe we did, you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you want to complain to Andrew about me, andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Or if you want to complain to Andrew about Andrew, you can do that. Too. Or you can email me to complain about you. Sure. I mean, any of those combinations, you could CC us. You know, you could put us on the same email. Whatever works for you. We're also on social media at Whistlekick. If you want to support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial arts of the world, you could go to whistlekick.com, grab something using the code podcast15. You could join the Patreon, P A T R E O N.com slash Whistlekick. You could also consider leaving reviews and all kinds of other things. Go to whistlekick.com slash family. If you are part of the Whistlekick family, you're going to type that into some web browser somewhere and see all the cool stuff that we've got there. It's links to everything you can do to help us, things that you may find benefit in, as well as some rotating behind the scene discounts, photos, stuff that we're not putting anywhere else. Okay. Uh, I mentioned seminars. I do teach seminars. If you'd like to bring me or, or perhaps us, if we sure. can make it work logistically to your school, we're game to do that. Reach out. We also have training programs, whistlekick.com. There's a ton of stuff. If you haven't been to whistlekick.com in a while. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.